Welcome to St. John's. Boy, that is loud. It is so good to see all of you here and those of you that are home folks and those of you that have come home uh, for this Easter celebration this Sunday. I would ask that you would look around you. If there are folks that you don't know, be sure and say hello to them. If you are a visitor this morning, we have some little gifts for you. We've got bags, um, little gift bags out in the narthex as you leave. So if you are visiting with us this morning, we would invite you to uh, pick up one of those bags and feel at home. This is the best day of the year because the light of Christ is alive within all of us. Let us worship God. Please rise for the call to worship. Oh, praise to the God of laughter, whose humor sends ripples through even the river of death, who turns the mustard seed into a tree. Like a trickster, you turn our world topsy-turvy. Our world sometimes seems like a fun house in which all the popular routes lead us in circles. On Easter morning, however, God reveals the world in which even the dead ends have doors. O oh, four thousand tongues to sing the praise of one who is all, who is as invisible as the wind, yet as solid as a rock. O oh, four thousand tongues to sing, God has raised Christ from death. He is risen. Christ is risen indeed.
remain standing for the reading of the gospel. Today's lesson is from the book of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Let all children of God hear the good news. Praise be to God.
Good morning. Would the children please join me? Wait just a couple more seconds. Hi, friends. This is so exciting. Hello. Welcome. How are y'all today? You want to sit right there? That's a very special spot. You want to sit right here on the step? You want to sit right here? She'll come get you as soon as I'm done talking, I promise. Okay, you can stand. That's fine. Um, guess what? I have something to say. Merry Christmas. <laughs> April Fools. <laughs> yeah. Well, y'all are just a laugh. More than that. <laughs> Has anybody played an April Fool's joke on you this morning? No? Man, come on, parents. <laughs> um, has anyone played an April Fool's joke on you ever? Or a joke on you before? Anybody want to share one that was really funny? Here, come here. While me and my mom were, while, I mean, me and my sister were in the bathtub, my mom got some glitter, turned off the lights, and poured it on us. Oh, my goodness. But you know what? Joke's on her, because she's probably still cleaning it up. <laughs> and, it, and it stayed in her hair for about two or three days. Yeah, I bet it did. You have one you want to share? Okay. One time our dad put a prank on her, our mom. He put like these pop thingies on the toilet when she loose, went to lose the restroom. They popped. Oh my goodness. Whoa. Okay, well remind me not to go to y'all's house. <laughs> I'll get, there's a lot of jokes happening in the bathroom. Wow. Okay, well... Guess what? What else is today besides April Fools? What else is today? Easter. Easter. And what can anyone tell me what happens on Easter? Jaden? Jesus rises. Okay. Now, think about it. Can we have story time? Can y'all pretend with me for a second? Okay. If we lived a long time ago, back with Jesus, and we saw Jesus die on the cross, and then someone came up to us and said, Jesus has risen, would you be waiting for them to say April Fool's? Does that seem possible that somebody could rise from the dead? Does that seem possible? No. So you know what they did? If you don't believe something, what do you do? If I told you that there was a whole zoo full of animals in this sanctuary, come to church, there's a whole zoo of animals in the sanctuary, what would you go do? Where would you go? Come to the sanctuary. <laughs> I would come to the sanctuary, right? Because you want to see what? The animals. Yeah, because you want to see the animals. Okay? So what do you think they did when people were saying, Jesus has risen? Where do you think they went? Any ideas? They went to where he was buried. And guess what they saw? Did they see Jesus? No. 
So what had happened? He rose. He rose. Yeah, he rose. Isn't that awesome? And it wasn't a joke. They had to go and they had to see it to believe it because they didn't believe it at first. But that is how extraordinary, right, the story is. Isn't that awesome? So that's what today is about. It's not about jokes, right? We can still have a little bit of fun with April Fools later on. Okay, don't let them take all the fun away. But just remember what amazing things happened on Easter, right? All right, will you guys pray with me? Dear God, we thank you so much for being a God of love and a God of life and for sharing your son with us. We um, praise you endlessly and are so thankful um, for the laughter and the joy that comes from the little jokes, but also the bigger picture of love that comes from the Easter story, which was no joke. We pray all these things in your wonderful name and all God's children said, Amen. So Easter on April Fool's Day, <laughs> it is hard to let that uh, rare conjunction of dates pass by unnoticed. Do you know that since 1700, Easter has fallen on April the 1st only 11 times? <laughs> Very rare. And the last time that Christians celebrated Easter on April the 1st, was in 1956. I'll give you a little time warp here. 1956, we were still almost 10 years away from the color transition of 1965. You know what that was? That was when it was announced that over half of all television network primetime programming would be broadcast in color the next fall. <laughs> I mean, you can watch this Easter service live on your phone. <laughs> so the last Easter Fools Sunday really happened in a, a different world. <laughs> Typically on April Fool's Day, pranks are played on people, well, on people who have forgotten that it's April Fool's Day, and some really famous pranks have uh, been on a massive scale, <laughs> like when the British Broadcasting Corporation uh, once broadcast a short documentary purporting to show Swiss farmers picking freshly grown spaghetti. <laughs> they called it the Swiss Spaghetti Harvest. And people flooded the BBC with a request to purchase spaghetti plants. <laughs> April Fools. <laughs> A whole slew, slew of candidates for April Fool come before us on Easter Fool Sunday. Pontius Pilate, for example, the Roman procurator who colluded with religious populism and, and allowed Jesus' execution to go forward in the name of the empire. 
But then Easter came and, and a whole new mu- movement of, of fearless followers of the way is unleashed. So, uh, sorry, Pilate. <laughs> nice try. April Fool's. You know that many of Jesus' disciples felt foolish as the the crucifixion became inevitable. I mean, they had gone away from their homes. They had left their jobs. They had left their loved ones to follow this executed, itinerant, visionary. And they had to go back home. And then Easter comes. And the inspiration to give one's all to Jesus' vision only multiplies. April Fool's. Annas, the high priest, he's sort of the grand moth Tarkin of Holy Week. And he's had enough. And he corrupts witnesses. And he falsifies evidence. He places a mole inside of Jesus' inner circle. And he tracks the movements of this uh, radical insurgent. And he bides his time for a chance to eliminate this threat to orthodoxy and power. But Easter comes. And the Jesus movement bursts out of hiding. April Fools. And those poor tomb guards, I mean, they're just cogs in the Roman industrial military complex who get cemetery duty and are frightened away in this ground-shaking confrontation between what they know to be ultimate and a mind-bending encounter with something even more. I don't know if it was the case for these soldiers, but sometimes it's a a loss of nerve and an unwillingness any longer to stand one's ground that actually precedes faith and, and a new standing on holy ground. Which brings us to perhaps the greatest fools of all, us. Easter comes to us today when religious populism and imperial power once again are almost indistinguishable. And both of them want to kind of wash their hands of the responsibility for their collusion to oppose all the disruption and all the discomfort that this clearly undead Christ is still causing in our world. April Fools. Easter comes to us when many disciples who have given up and gone home are once again hearing good news of resurrection that is displacing their previous Uh, religious embarrassment and sense of foolishness and replacing it with a new certainty and inspiration to give one's all for the cause of Christ. Christians are joining others who are also coming out of their houses and boldly into the streets, multiplying the spirit of this one who also laid down his life in the full and certain hope of resurrection. April Fools. Easter comes to us when the gatekeepers of an old orthodoxy and a system of law and order that is of the privileged, by the privileged, and for the privileged are feeling exposed and rejected and are frantically trying to reclaim their positions as the rightful gatekeepers. The difference is, of course, this this Easter there are no corrupt witnesses. There is no falsified evidence. There are no moles in inner circles and no 
labeling of the Easter spirit as radical insurgency. Wink, wink. (laughs) I mean, really, there truly is nothing new under the sun, is there? But Easter comes and the Jesus movement bursts out of hiding. April Fool's. Do I need to draw parallels for you about how we can all become unwitting cogs of the systems of power and post it as guards over that which is already dead? But Easter still comes and we're frightened away from that post by a ground-shaking confrontation between what we have known and what we desperately intend to know by faith and through new footing on holy ground. April Fool's. We who love this Jesus, we who aspire to follow his example, we who take him at his word are April fools. Or maybe we're Easter fools who follow the Easter fool Jesus who came and called the bluff of all the powers that claim ultimacy and that frighten us into marching to their drummer. But now we're Easter fools who refuse to claim that we believe and go on behaving as though we do not. We're Easter fools who may not know exactly how it is that Jesus is alive, but but we recognize his presence when we are with and for the same people he was with and for. We are Easter fools who call the bluff of the powers of fear. Because Easter is still happening. And it's still resurrection. It's resurrection from death to life. From death to life. Death to life. On this Easter Fool's Sunday, perhaps this is what we have an opportunity to do. To reaffirm our foolishness. And then to continue to walk by faith with God. Who is bringing resurrection from death to life. You know the last laugh is going to be ours. Easter fools. In the name of Christ. Amen.
Christ invites to his table all who love him and who earnestly seek to live in forgiveness and in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess that we are not always what we should be, but also that God's mercies are greater than all our sin. Let us pray. God, of our greatest joy, we know that you have blessed us richly. You have given us Jesus the Christ, raised him to life beyond death, and promised that because he lives, we shall also live. Forgive us when we act as though we do not know. Keep us mindful of all the ways in which you will always have the last laugh simply because there is nothing in life or in death that can separate us from your great love. Easter proclaims that the love of God wins. The power of God's love at work in Christ is the power of forgiveness, freedom, and life unbounded. In Christ's name, let us live, for we are forgiven and free to love as Christ loves. Amen. And now, as forgiven and beloved children of God, let us stand and offer signs to one another of God's peace. United Methodist Church has been a staple to the Lubbock community for almost 80 years. St. John's believes that every individual is a wonder of God's beautiful creation. And when at St. John's, know that we celebrate diversity and we welcome all people to join us in worship. Thanks so much for spending your morning with us. his grave clothes robed in white Christ leads us from darkness to light help us to follow you leaving behind the things of our past that obscures our horizons we dedicate these offerings this morning as tokens of the breaking dawn of Christ we pray through Christ our Lord amen
be seated. You'll find the musical setting for our great Thanksgiving this morning on page number 17 in the United Methodist Hymnal. We invite you to turn to that page and prepare to join in as we sing together, as we give thanks and praise, as we come now to this sacred meal. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We offer our entire being to the God of creation, who made the sun and the moon to govern by day and by night and hung the stars in the sky. We offer our entire being to the great God who hollowed out the valleys and bulged up the mountains, who filled the seven seas and populated the world with glorious creatures. We bless your name, O God, who created us and fashioned us from the dust and breathed into us the breath of life. With your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed be the name of Jesus the Christ, who came to us in the midst of our destructive ways, healing the sick and casting out evil powers and siding with the oppressed, showing compassion for those who suffer. Nevertheless, we turned him into a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. He was persecuted by certain religious leaders and Betrayed by one of his own, he was lied about, abused, and executed on a Roman cross. Yet even on the day of his crucifixion, he continued to teach those who would listen. When evil people came with his betrayer, Jesus did not respond with violence, choosing instead to remind us that those who live by the sword will die by the sword. When he was falsely accused and condemned to death, Jesus refused to do harm, and while dying, prayed, God forgive them, for they know not what they do. Early on the morning of the third day, you raised Christ to new life, giving Him the place at your right hand and unleashing unstoppable faith in a people who look for the day when the lion will lie down peaceably with the lamb when sickness and disease will no longer be known, where the wicked will cease from troubling and we will study war no more. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, He took bread and He gave thanks to you. And He broke the bread and gave it to His disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is My body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the meal was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many. And as often as you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. And so today we remember the bread and the cup. We remember His life and death and resurrection and we receive these gifts proclaiming the mystery of faith. (laughs) 
Holy God, pour out your Spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might be Christ's body, offering ourselves to be God's representatives in the world. To you, Holy One, all power and praise. God, who so loves the world, now and forevermore. worship today, I know we have some who have never been to St. John's before. We certainly want you to feel welcomed and at home. And we also want you to know that in United Methodist tradition, we, uh, we sh- uh, share an open communion table, which means everyone is welcome to come and to receive communion. Um, that for us is more than just a a desire to be a, a really welcoming and inclusive church, uh, even though that is our desire, but even that desire comes from uh, a, a, an idea that the way that God welcomes everyone is the way that we should also welcome everyone. And so and no one is ever turned away. We want you to also know that if there's any reason that you don't wish to receive communion, just stay right where you are. Uh, others will do that as well, and no one will think a thing of that. But for us, the invitation to gather together around Christ's table and in Christ's name comes from God. It's a sign of, of community. It's, it's that table where everyone has a seat. It's a vision of what we believe is certainly coming. <laughs> and so we want you to be a part, and we want you to come. We invite you to come. Let us gather. Simply come here, a piece of bread will be placed in your hand with the words, the body of Christ given for you. Hold on to that bread just a moment, step to the chalice and just lightly dip the bread and eat. Then you're welcome to kneel and pray or simply return uh, to your seats.
Our hymn of faith this morning is hymn number 318 as we sing our hymn of faith. Let us take this time to offer our commitments to God, the commitments of our hearts, the things that we've heard or discovered even this morning, or those things that we've been thinking about for quite some time. Today can be that day to to, uh, commit to those acts of faith to step out and do the right thing, trusting that God will be with us. Let us sing together. Hymn number 318. Please stand as we sing. Go from this service united with God. Go rejoicing to declare with those who first saw it in hearts and hands and voices that the day has dawned. Amen.
We want to invite our children to participate in our egg hunt. Um, so if you have little ones, it won't take long to grab a few eggs. We're going to go out this door and to the left, that way. Um, and we will have people guiding you to the back where you can participate. Thank you.